Well, good morning, everybody. Um, it's lovely to be able to share God's word with you. Uh, I'm in the Eastern Cape, and um, I'm so grateful to be able to share God's word with you um, through this medium. I do hope that we will be able to meet together again, um, but this is what we have for the time being. I'm going to spend some time in prayer for us as a nation and for us as God's people. Uh, and then we will have a look at Psalm 23 together. We're going to have a look at Psalm 23, so please have that open in front of you. But first, let me pray. Father God, we pray for our country at this time. Lord, there are so many things going on right now. We have a pandemic on our hands. A pandemic that has so many consequences we have crime and looting on our hands the endangering of lives the closure of businesses the lack of employment of our people we have rising numbers of infection death Lord, we cry out to you this morning to please, Lord, intervene. Lord, please, won't you turn things around for us as a nation? Won't you steer us, Lord, toward peace and harmony? I pray, Lord, that you would find a way for the violence to calm down for the looting and the crime to dissipate, for the vaccine to be administered to as many people as possible, for the COVID numbers to go down, Lord, for sickness and death to be at bay. We cry out to you, Lord, because you are the all-powerful God in your hands are all things. You guide history towards its God-ordained conclusion. We pray, Lord, for the church in South Africa. We pray that in the midst of everything that's going on in our country, that your people will be holding out the light of the gospel because this is our true hope in this world that is doomed to perish. You, Father, sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into this world to die on that cross, to pay the price for the sins of many, to bring about the hope of new life through his resurrection. And I pray, Lord, that this message would ring out throughout our land that your people will come to trust this good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and know salvation and know the hope of the new world that is to come. Please, Lord, won't you strengthen us as your people to hold out this message boldly, courageously, accurately, lovingly in a world that is dying without it. Please be with your ministers throughout our land. Empower them, Lord. Give them courage. Give them boldness. Give them clarity. Give them a focus on you and your scriptures. Please, Lord, won't you steer them away from error, steer them away from false doctrine, guide them toward the truth. We pray for your people. We pray, Lord, that in these times your people would not lose heart and that they would not grow weary, that they would not grow faint as they wait on you, as they patiently wait on you. 
please, Lord, won't you strengthen them with your scriptures. Strengthen them with your love. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your presence. Oh Lord, I pray that we would grow in our relationship with you through all these difficulties that we are facing. Please, Lord, won't you give us a razor focus on you. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is now sitting at the right hand of the Father Almighty, who rules over all of this world by the power of his Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do turn in your Bibles to Psalm 23 if you haven't already done so. I will be reading the entire psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. This morning we might feel vital and full of strength but the reality for all of us is that no matter how secure and full of life and health we might feel Death does hang over all of us. We're looking at a psalm this morning that's all about living in the shadow of death. It's quite a depressing thought that, isn't it? But the surprise that we're going to find in Psalm 23 is that under this dreadful shadow of death, in the darkest valley, in the gloomy dungeon of doom in which we exist, right in the heart of this horror, you actually don't find depression and despair. <laughs> you find contentment. You find satisfaction. You find calm. You find stillness. In Psalm 23, in the valley of the shadow of death, you find a refreshment for the soul. And so for a few minutes this morning, I would like us to just have our Bibles open and just have a look at what the Psalm has to say to us. Don't take my word for it. Have a look at the text with me. Verse one, the Psalmist says, I lack nothing. Verse two, he makes me lie down in lush, green, serene pastures. Verse 3. He leads me beside quiet waters. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Verse 4. Even though... I walk through the darkest valley, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Contentment, satisfaction, calm.
calm, peace, refreshment of the soul. Where? In the darkest valley. It's one of the reasons why I love the Bible. This is the Word of God. Um, it never ceases to amaze us. Right in the valley of the shadow of death, here's a psalm speaking about refreshment of the soul, speaking about contentment, stillness, quiet waters. As I'm speaking to you today, we have just laid my grandmother uh, to rest. In her, I saw a contentment, a satisfaction, a peace, a soul refreshed by the Word of God. And brothers and sisters, I want you to know this morning that this contentment and this satisfaction and peace and deep refreshment of the soul is yours and mine to enjoy for all of the days of our life. Just like my grandmother, just like your loved one who was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. The question, of course, is how? How? How do you find contentment in darkness? How do you find satisfaction in the trouble? How do you find peace and calm in the storm? Soul deep refreshment in the darkness. And that's what this psalm has to offer us this morning. So many books are sitting in bookstores trying to address the problem of the darkness and the tragedy of our world. Gallons of ink have been spilt trying to figure out how exactly do we navigate this troublesome life. But at the end of the day, it's the Word of God that finally has the answer that we are looking for you and i we try so many things we go around so many corners we dig in so many holes trying to find satisfaction trying to find ways by which we can live this life with joy and peace but finally it's the word of god to which we must turn have a look at verse one here's the answer the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing you see as a shepherd takes ownership over his sheep the Lord has taken hold of his people I am his I am the Lord's I belong to God I am led by God he guides me therefore there is nothing that I lack my grandmother would say, I may lack health, I may lack youthfulness, I may lack strength, I may lack blood circulation. She died of a stroke. I may lack the loved ones I've lost over the 90 odd years that I've lived, but I lack nothing. The reason I lack nothing is because I don't lack God. The Lord is my shepherd. He is my contentment. He is my delight. The answer, brothers and sisters, is God. Like a shepherd knows what's best for his sheep. Like a shepherd nurtures and cares for his sheep. The Lord himself is my shepherd. Verse 2. So when the fields become parched and arid and my depression grows, my shepherd makes me lie down in lush green pastures. As danger looms over the horizon, where's the shepherd and his sheep in verse 2? They are lying down in green pastures. 
safe, satisfied, and secure. Verse 3. As all the streams in sight dry up, as I find myself thirsty and unsatisfied, nevertheless, he leads me beside quiet waters. And when I drink from the streams he provides, he refreshes not simply my physical thirst, but the very thirst of my soul. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths, even though, verse 4, I walk through the darkest valley. In dark and dangerous paths, what would you expect? You would expect fear, wouldn't you? You would expect anxiety. You would expect panic to grip you. But look at verse 4 again. Even though I walk the darkest paths, I will fear no evil. The question we're asking is, how is it possible to walk through the dark valley in the shadow of death? How is it possible to find refreshment of the soul in the midst of the darkness of this life? How is that possible? The psalmist answers it here again in verse 4. For, meaning because, for you are with me and like a shepherd wisely guides his sheep, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our hope in the darkness of this world is belonging to the Lord. No matter what threatens us, our contentment, our satisfaction, our peace, our refreshment, our comfort come from the fact of belonging to the Lord, who is our shepherd in the midst of all the things that threaten us even death itself. Look at how verse 5 expresses the truth of this joy we have in the darkness because the Lord is our shepherd. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here are all your enemies. Here are all your troubles. Where are you? The Lord has prepared a table for you. You're feasting. Your soul is full of delight in the midst of your enemies. The enemies aren't gone. They're there. They are a threat. But you are feasting at the table that the Lord himself has prepared for you in his house. That, brothers and sisters, is the Christian experience. That is what belonging to God means for every single day of yours and my life. In the words of verse 6, Surely your goodness, surely your love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is such a joy to be a Christian because the Word of God assures us that His goodness will always follow us, no matter where we are, no matter what paths we are traveling down, the love and the goodness of God will always follow us. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And for those of us who are perhaps listening this morning, um, and maybe you have not yet put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that these words can be yours as well. Isaiah 53 tells us that you and I, like sheep, have gone astray. We each turned on the Lord and we went our own way. But Jesus Christ shows up in John 10 and verse 14 and he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. If you are a non-Christian here this morning, 
Jesus Christ, <laughs> the great shepherd, laid down his life for the sheep. He laid down his life so that we would know him as our very own shepherd. My grandmother was known by the Good Shepherd and she knew him. He laid down his life for her so that now she is dwelling in his house forever and evermore. We are grateful for her life and uh, I'm grateful especially um, for her having shown us what it means to know God and to love God. I want to close this morning with these words from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 24 to 25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Let us pray together. Our Lord God, we thank you so much for these words that we can hang on to in the midst of the darkness. We thank you, Lord, that we may know refreshment and contentment stillness and peace right in the valley of the shadow of death itself. Thank you, Lord, that your goodness and your love will follow us all the days of our life. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son, the great shepherd of our souls, to lay down his life for us, the sheep, so that we may enjoy you now and forevermore. I pray for those of us who are hurting in many ways. Uh, these are not easy times. I pray for those who are going through difficulties that you might refresh their soul, Lord. May they grow in their knowledge of you. Give them the words of Psalm 23 to hang on to and to feast on. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.